Hello and welcome. All right, problem one. This time, we're going to work with capacitors. And then we're going to start off by talking about parallel plate charges, sheets of charge, which in fact are capacitors. All right, optionally charged parallel plates are separated by 5 millimeters. A potential difference of 600 volts exists between the two plates. What is the magnitude of the electric field between the plates? All right. So to do this, we're first going to draw a picture, which is pretty much what we do every time, but it doesn't make it any less true this time. So I'm going to draw a box. Make it, there we go. Click. And make the outside black. There we go. Hmm. Probably getting too fancy here. It's okay. It's still going to happen. There's nothing wrong with being fancy. All right. So this guy is going to be over here. The positives. One side is going to be positives. Draw some little pluses over here. This guy is going to be negative. All right. So we know that there is 600 volts. Hope 600. That's a terrible 600. Hope hope. Between the two. What is the magnitude of the electric field between the two plates? All right, so we know that um, voltage equals negative integral E dr. There we go. So in this case, then, we know that the electric field between from a um, infinite plane, which is what we're going to approximate these as, is constant. So the electric field is going to look like this. So if the electric field is like that, and it's constant, which it is, then that just gives us, we can pull out the E, we get the integral dr, and so we get negative E dx. So over here, they ask us, what is the magnitude of the electric field between the plates? So we want the electric field. OK. Oh, wait. I, uh, let's see here. I'm going to call this distance right here D. There we go. And I'm going to get rid of the dx. That way it's not confusing. The D there is not the derivative. It is the uh, distance between the two. So there, for we have electric field equals negative voltage divided by distance between the two. That seems reasonable. If I ask for the magnitude, yep, that way we don't have to worry about the sign. So in this case, then, we do 600, 600 divided by 5 times 10 to the negative third, because they're uh, millimeters. That gives us 120,000. Or 1.2 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. So 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. Fifth. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and that's all we do. The idea here is we do an integral, and we know that the electric field is constant, so we can pull it out. What is the magnitude of the force on the electron? between plates. All right. So now that we have electric field, electric field directly relates to force. So force equals EQ. They say electron, right? So to find the, so then for the Q right here, that's going to be 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Like, wow, how'd you know that? Eh, you probably learned it. Probably not, too. It doesn't take that long to realize, to memorize one number. All right, and here we go. 1.9 times 10 to the negative 24th. Yeah, it's pretty small, but it is just one electron. 0.9 times 10, did I say 24th or 14th? 14th, negative 14th. All right, so that will be the magnitude of the force on the electron, some random electron that happens to be between the plates. All right. So then they ask us, how much work must be done 
on the electron to move it to the negative plate if it is already positioned at 300 millimeters. All right, so I'm going to get a red here. So I'm going to say this D here is 5 millimeters, which it is. And we're going to have an electron, and it's 3 millimeters from the positive. So it's going to be right here. That's going to be our electron. And it's going to be a distance of 3. Oop. 3. Yeah, I can do a better 3 than that. There we go. All right, so now we have to find out how much work. So we should have a natural feeling in life mm, excuse me. that voltage, or as I like to say, it, uh, electrical potential, potential energy difference is related to work, i.e. potential energy, which is all related to work. It's measured in joules. So uh, if you think of um, voltage as joules per coulomb, which, which is what it is, um, they just say volts because it's fancier. Then we're just going to take the um, voltage that it takes to get from this side to this side, and we can do this because the electric field is constant. Uh, we're going to take the energy it takes to get from this side, uh, from negative plate to the positive plate, and then just ratio it by um, how far it actually goes. So there's two ways to do this. One, we can do work equals integral f dot dx, which in this case will be e times q. Still have a little integral thing here. Still have a little dx. Electric field is constant. The charge of electron is constant. So we're going to have e q integral dx. And we are going to solve this from, hmm, let's see here. So this electron is going to move to the left. So it's going to move from, I'm going to say, I'm going to call this, hmm, 2, and I'm going to call this 5. So 0, 2, 5. In the end, it doesn't matter as long as the difference between the beginning and the end is 3. So I'm going to say we start at 2, we end at 5. Now, I could say that this was 0 and that was 5, and I get the same answer, um, except I'd have to worry about the signs. So in the end, I'm going to kind of ignore the signs and know that it's going to have more energy, kinetic energy, when it's here at the positive than when it started. Because what it's doing is it's converting potential energy from its initial position, potential energy from its initial position, and converting it to kinetic energy. And so what I'm going to do when I take the integral of that, I'm going to get just x. And then when I plug in the 5 and the 2, I'm going to get 3. So I'm going to get the electric field, which we got above, times Q, which is charge of electron, times, and in this case, it's just going to be 3. All right? So another way to look at that would be, and I'm going to use, instead of using joules, I'm going to use electron volts, because this is what electron volts were made for in life. So the distance, or the potential energy, potential, potential energy difference between the two is 600 volts. So, and that is the same as, or it's better stated as, joules per coulomb. Well, what I'm going to call, the, instead of using joules, I'm going to use electron volts. Yeah. Hmm, don't know if I can use, it had to be electron volts per electron then. Interesting. Anyway, now I'm pointless. So the whole idea of electron volts is I take my electron, I put it right here. I let it go, and it zips away from the negative side, because electrons are negatively charged, and it goes to the positive side. When it gets to the positive side, it will have um, 600 electron volts of energy. So I'm going to say it has 600 electron volts of energy. When I took it here, held it right there, no, nope, held it right, right there, I let it go, and it zips over to the other side. So there. Hmm, I think my left and right are mixed up. Wait a sec, wait a sec. There we go. Bam. 
starts here, moves over there. And when it gets all the potential energy transferred over to kinetic, then it has 600 electron volts because it passed through 600 volts of potential potential energy using one electron that gives you an electron volt per each volt. In this case, you have 600, so you have 600 electron volts. So we could take this 600 electron volts and convert it to joules. And then you'll see, oh, okay, so what's conversion between electron volts and normal joules? Well, here, electron volt, 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th. Now, that should look familiar. If it doesn't, you should be studying more. But what you notice then is, oh, hey, that's pretty much just the charge of an electron, which is, which is exactly it. So what they do, so what you could do then to convert that to, from uh, electron volts to uh, joules is you divide by the charge of an electron. So if we do this um, using electron volts, uh, then we just do it that way. But you're like, all right, we don't need all 600 because it didn't go the entire distance. You're right, it didn't. So we need to ratio it. And since this is a constant electric field, we'll then just ratio it by the size. So of the total five millimeters that it could have gone through, it only passed through three of them. So it only is going to have three-fifths of the energy. And that's only because we have a constant electric field here between two parallel plates. OK? There's a whole bunch of ways you can work that. You can do it any of the ways we want here. Um, this guy would work probably the easiest. So we take our 1.9 times 10 to the negative 19th. 1.9 times 10 to the negative 19th. So that's our electric field. So to find the work, I'm going to use the formula work equals, oh, there we go, work equals voltage times charge. Now, the trick here is that this voltage right here is not going to be 600 volts. It's going to be scaled down because the voltage of 600 volts is between the each plate. And this voltage that I'm using here is only between um, three millimeters from the positive plate. So what I'm going to do here then is I'm going to do voltage times three fifths times Q. And then over here, if we look at over this, this electric field, electric field in this case is going to be um, If you do electric field divided by 5, that's going to be the same as voltage. If we look up here, we wrote that guy down already. Up here, we have um, – oh, sorry. That guy's – there we go. Voltage. That electric field is voltage divided by five. So electric voltage, electric field is voltage divided by the distance. So this electric field voltage divided by five is the same as this voltage divided by five here, multiplied by three, multiplied by five, three, and then multiplied by the charge. All right. So as long as you have an understanding of which way what you're doing, either way of doing this is completely fine. All right, I'm going to multiply this guy out real quick and give us an answer. So you can go away. 600 times 3 times 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19th divided by 5. And we should get a really small number, 5.77 times 10 to the negative 17th. Yep, that seems reasonable because we're measuring it in joules. If we we're measuring it in electron volts, then it would be significantly, significantly bigger. All right, and that's how you do that problem. The big part here is draw a good picture, understand this relationship right here where you can pull out the electric field when the electric field is constant, and then know that electric field applies to force and potential applies to potential energy. All right, good luck. I will see you on the next one.